uh, hi everyone in this video we will look at uh, the relationship between uh, the amba axi write uh, aw address and w strobe um, and we will uh, try to keep the length constant so for this uh, video i have selected a uh, amba axi bus width of 32 bits and i have chosen a slave address space of 4kb and a slave address range spawns from hex 100 to hex 100 f uh, the last three nibbles uh, indicating that uh, uh, like about 12 bits of 4kb space and the scenario that we will explore today is uh, we will issue four writes of length one byte to first four locations of this address space and then uh, we will issue four bytes uh, we will issue four writes of length one byte to the last four location of uh, this address range. So what I have done is I have loaded a test run um, with uh, this scenario. So here what I'm showing you is I'm showing you all the AXI transactions. Uh, for the ease, I have already done the filtering. So I have chosen a transaction length of one byte and I've chosen the completed transactions. And here you can see we have about eight uh, writes. And if you see the first four writes uh, are, uh, are, are, are to the beginning uh, first four bytes of this uh, address range. And then if you look at the last four writes are to the last four bytes of our uh, slave uh, address range. So this is showing um, the fact that uh, these eight transactions have been issued. Uh, next, what we will do is so this issue, this could be issued either from your sequence or your uh, software. So next, we will look at how these uh, uh, transactions have been executed on the actual AXI channels. So uh, what I have done is I have filtered these uh, eight uh, uh, transactions um, in the eight transaction counts. This transaction count uh, variable is common between your high level uh, uh, AXI transactions and the low level activity for the correlation. Um, now let's look at the activity on your uh, right address channel and the uh, uh, right data channel and the right response. Uh, although, however, I'm mainly interested in AW and uh, W. So this is the first uh, right. And then if you look at uh, the address uh, 1000, uh, uh, hex 1000, right? Now, when we look at the right strobe, uh, it is uh, hex 1 indicating that the lower uh, byte is being written, uh, right? So although the length remains same, like AW length of 0 indicating that it is 1, 0 plus 1, and the, uh, the 2 uh, is, is the encoding for 4 bytes, so this AXI write is of four bytes and we are using the strobe one uh, because of this address being uh, a 32 bit aligned address. Uh, we, we, we are using the strobe of one to indicate that the lower uh, byte is being utilized. Whereas if you look at the next write, which is to the address hex 1001, um, again, the length and the size is same. Uh, if you look at it over here, the strobe has now moved to the uh, next uh, byte location, uh, which is 2. Uh, so we are using the byte lane 1. Uh, similarly, for the third write, now the uh, uh, strobe has moved to the uh, second position, 0, 1, and 2. So we are using essentially like a third uh, byte lane. And uh, if we go to the, the fourth write, right? So it has moved to the last byte lane, uh, which is the third uh, byte lane. So here we can see that although the length is same, when we change the address, uh, the byte position, how the AXI bus utilizes the strobe values to communicate that to the slave and hence the slave will be able to update the uh, correct location. Now, now, one point to note over here is that this unaligned address, the slave must be capable of handling this, uh, that it might require slave to read entire 32 bits and maybe update only the corresponding byte position using the strobe and uh, you know it might need to be written back to the uh, actual memory. That responsibility goes to the slave. Uh, if we look at the last four uh, location writes, behaves exactly similar uh, way, right? Because it's 
uh, it's not the actual address that matters but it is the alignment uh, of the particular address that matters so if you see that we are issuing to ffc uh, you can see the strobe value being one when we make it ffd uh, the strobe value becomes two when we're issuing to ffe uh, strobe value of four and when we are issuing to fff uh, strobe value of eight uh, so when we look at all these variations uh, it gives us a more uh, clearer idea of what we have read in the spec. Uh, I hope that is helpful. If you have any questions, uh, do write it in the comments. Thank you.